Hello, hello. We're going to be taking a look at a, an Amazon affiliate site that at one point was pulling in 5,000 per month and the traffic has dropped, but we're going to take a look at what's been going on with it. Now, I've talked about this site before in another video. The link to that original video is below. A couple announcements I want to get out of the way right away here is um, uh, number one, I'm doing a free live session, a workshop tomorrow on outlining content. There's a link for that in the description. If you're watching the replay of this video, you can still follow the link. And even if it's after um, the live session for the workshop, you could check it out. So I want to let you know about that. Additionally, this video, uh, there's, an, uh, there's an affiliate link or two for SiteGround and SEMrush. It's relevant though. Uh, we're actually gonna look at SEMrush to get a idea of the traffic for this site and the ups and downs. Now I see we got a pretty good crew on the uh, <laughs> on the chat over here. So Mark's on, Lance, Bree. We have uh, Poosh, uh, Chris, Ben, and David. What's up, David? haven't seen you in a while, Duke and PG. So as some of these Wednesday session goes, uh, or some as some of them go, I'm going to keep this on topic today. So if you have random other questions, I'm probably not going to answer it. Additionally, I'm probably just going to ignore the chat and rely on my very kind moderators, Lance and Duke, and maybe a couple other people are going to show up too and um, just sort of keep things under control while I'm not watching. And as you know, uh, guys, uh, zero tolerance. So if anything looks a little funny, just kick them out. Um, you know, we don't, we don't really, uh, yeah, no second chances here. So, okay, we are going to hop into it. So I have a couple things uh, that I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna try and share my screen here. By the way, if you have the opportunity, please hit the thumbs up, hit the like button. If you enjoy the videos, um, it just apparently helps people find these videos. So I'm gonna go away from the chat. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves, ask questions. I'm gonna try and come back, but um, I think there's gonna be a lot of chatter going on. So I may not be able to keep up very well. All right, let's see if I could share my screen without, uh, you know, sharing my email or anything like that. Okay. How's everyone doing today, by the way? Everyone having a good day? Boom. Okay, here's the rounding sound. Now, as I mentioned, I looked at this site in the past and very cool thing, someone uh, either told the owner of the site or the owner of the site is a fan of the channel and happened to see the video. And he chimed in in, in, that, uh, in the comments and said, yeah, like here's some details on it. And what I'll show you in a second is the traffic estimates. And apparently the site was making like 5k per month or pretty darn close to it per the comments and when we see the traffic which i'll you know i'll show you on some rush here shortly um basically i mean it looks like a pretty good amount of traffic and there's a wide range of products there so let's go over to some rush here and again uh there's an affiliate link for some rush you could actually get a like a, I think a seven or 14 day trial, depending on what they're running. And I highly recommend you check it out. Um, SEMrush is, you know, sort of my go-to tool. Um, I use Ahrefs as well, but I'm kind of, I'm used to the layout and the way the tool is for SEMrush, even though Ahrefs has very similar functionality. I just kind of prefer SEMrush for this sort of analysis. So as we're checking this out, you can see the site had like tremendous growth from uh, looks like the very end of the year in 2015 uh, up through 2017, the early part of 2017. So for about a year, it was like tremendous growth and the estimated traffic was uh, 16,000 to about 17,500. And by the way, usually these estimates on SEMrush are low. 
they don't account for like the you know the the big portion of long tail traffic that may be coming in so basically you end up with maybe like twice as much traffic or three or four times as much traffic depending on how many long tail keywords it's pulling in it's really hard to tell what that is now a couple other things we see on this semrush um dashboard is the number of backlinks so that's total number of backlinks uh 2600 from about uh 224 different domains so that that's a significant number of links um you know for us to analyze the backlinks is beyond the scope of what we're covering today um so another you know we'll just look at it really quick one of the really cool things on SEMrush is you could get these organic keywords for sites your own sites other sites and you could also look at the competition and do the same analysis but what you could do is hop over to the full report and then you can export like all those keywords, right? And then do some analysis. Now, if you're interested to see how I do the analysis, there is a video, which I totally forgot to put a link for, but if you look for the, let's see if I put a link for something in here. It is the Keyword Golden Ratio Masterclass playlist, right? There's a video in there where I use SEMrush and I, basically show you the filters that I use. And it's very helpful. I, I think it's the best video in the whole playlist. And I mean, I guess I'm tooting my own horn because Alex Cooper over at WP Eagle helped me on the playlist. But I think the SEM rush is like the most actionable. I go through like so many details of it. It, um, I don't know, it's my favorite. I'll just put it that way. All right. So check out some rush, check out the video on the keyword golden ratio and using some rush. And again, it is uh, just super valuable in doing analysis for like other sites. So I'm going to stop and show my face here on the screen again and just say, hello. I, I think a lot of other people hopped on one thing that, um, one thing that I wanted to remind people of is that you can hit the thumbs up and I'll really appreciate that if you enjoy these videos. If you enjoy videos like this, especially the teardowns, because they were, um, honestly, they were very popular, but I got a little bored doing them, which, you know, that's my own fault. So if you like these teardowns, please uh, hit a th the thumbs up and, uh, you know, you know, the thumbs up and then leave a comment. Okay, so let's look at the actual site here. And what we're gonna do, because I already have analyzed this site some, please check out the previous video. I'm gonna look just at the homepage and then at two reviews that I arbitrarily picked um, just before we started, because a lot of times that's just kind of how I roll. <laughs> right, right before we start is when I take a look. It actually reminds me of my corporate days when I would I was running a lot of meetings when I was a project manager, and um, I would just show up, be given a presentation, and then have to present it to a bunch of people. So that's what we do here. As you saw, the the traffic was down for a little while for the rounding sound, and Abishak um, mentioned in the, in the comments, and you see Abishak's, um, you know picture and you know a little a uh, little personal touch here in the sidebar he mentioned that it's sort of the fallen traffic sort of corresponded with the fred updates um around you know affiliate content it seemed to impact a lot of sites that had um a great deal of affiliate content so we're not 100 percent sure like why the site um lost traffic but it, it it stands to reason that that had a big thing to do with it. So in general, this is a pretty nice looking site. It's fairly clean. Um, it's a simple logo up here. I, I like simple stuff. And if you've seen a decent number of my videos, you'll notice that um, I'm a simple person and I like I like these sort of simple layouts. Now, it's not my my favorite homepage layout. So this is sort of like an, an older school um, look where it's recent blog post. That's what's on the homepage. Now there's other stuff on here. So, the, but there's recent blog post, and we'll notice that Abishak has been publishing. Um, you know, there's a June 
May, another May, April. So he's been publishing more stuff more often um, here this year, but it looked like for a little while, maybe, you know, there wasn't a lot of stuff being published, but when you take a look, um, you know, there's, there's quite a few. Now, a couple other things I notice um, in the sidebar. So we have this personal touch over here. I like that. That's cool. Um, search the site. That's great. Recent post. That's pretty good. Although, in my opinion, it's a little bit um, redundant considering the recent posts are listed, um, you know, in the main part. Now, this is in the sidebar everywhere. So maybe that's okay. Um, there's a little banner here uh, for share a sale. So that's a specific... Um, you know, non Amazon affiliate offer that he's, you know, mentioning here, there, there is an Amazon link here, another Amazon link, another Amazon link, and, uh, you know, native ads over here from Amazon. So I would say, and that, that is a, in the sidebar, this is like a, one of those uh, floating sidebar deals. So in my opinion, a little heavy handed on the, on these little ads, but it does hit, you know, all the, all the main points I would, you know, just my opinion, I would prefer less ads, but that's just my own personal opinion. So th they may be pulling in, you know, if, if one person, you know, buys the share a sale um, offer like per month, that's probably pretty good. I mean, those probably pay out pretty decent. Okay. Next, let's take a look at this article that was published on April 19th. So not too long ago. So how to take care of your headphone like a baby. Let's read that again. How to take care of your headphone like a baby. And I think I noticed this in a couple of the titles where the grammar was maybe a tad off or maybe I'm just reading it wrong. Maybe both. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, so right off the bat, we see, you know, it's the same sort of layout. And I didn't mention it before. I do like the simple menu with not too many items. Sometimes we try and get too, um, I guess, we, we think about it too much. And we, we want to make like a really like thorough menu, but really simple is best. Um, it's rare that someone's going to like navigate through the menu. And if you have like a ton of stuff in your menu, it's just, it looks sloppy. If they're really looking for something, they can search the site here. All right. And a uh, quick note, I know a lot of people have just joined up. And basically, I'm ignoring the chat for now, and I'm relying on my kind moderators. Um, Duke and Lance uh, are the ones that I saw over there. Thank you both. Um, so if you're asking questions, I am just literally ignoring the chat so we can get through the material today. Thank you for your patience. So one thing that I notice is we have... We have the title here, but then we have the title listed like immediately after that in um, what looks to be um, probably an H2, if I had to guess. It's actually another H1. So this is kind of weird. You really don't actually want that. You want to just have like one H1 tag on your um, on each post. And in WordPress, usually it's the title, right? Um, so this is redundant. I would probably take that out. I mean, that you really don't want to have that there. Now, one of the reasons why I picked this one is that it, it's a informational article, I think. I mean, the idea is to take care of your headphones. However, um, I, you have an idea that someone's interested in taking care of their headphones, so you may be able to offer some affiliate products in here. So as we scroll down, I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, but you could see uh, Ashish here does a good job uh, just in spacing. The paragraphs aren't too long. There's a nice, there's a nice image here. So a little custom image, and it looks like some sort of stock image that they just inserted text on. So that's a nice touch. Then they go through, um, you know, various steps. There's not too many links in here. You can see um, they're they're linking to a. WikiHow article um, to keep cats from chewing on electric cords and chargers. So linking out to other, you know, big authority sites is a good idea. So protection, cleaning, using the headphones. And again, we'll just take a look at the, the links here. So they're internally linking to another post. So this is a nice touch and same deal here. So a couple things to note. They found, you know, how to take care of your headphones is probably 
the keyword that they're aiming for. And then they are linking to other posts on their site to sort of spread the link juice around should any links come to this page. And in my opinion, it's just a good thing to have your, um, you know, links on your site or sorry, links coming to your site from pages that are ranking, even if those pages happen to be on your site. So I think that's a, a key lesson. It's a, it's a very, uh, you know, it's the nuance, right? It's the nuance of like having something rank and then internally linking. So that's a good thing. If you have the opportunity to do that, you should. And that said, it's pretty short and got it how to take care of your headphones and they go on from there. So I would say, you know, the only, the only, you know, major thing in here is it's kind of short, you know, protection, cleaning and use. They probably could have, you know, added a little bit more. Um, I think that could have been a you could add a couple other points, maybe have a couple other pictures, maybe add a YouTube video in here, but it is an informational article and maybe they weren't like trying to knock it out of the park and they just wanted to get some more informational content on their site. As I mentioned, um, Abishak told us in the comment of the, the previous video that he thought maybe the Fred update sort of corresponded. So perhaps he's trying to get more content that is less affiliate oriented. Just a guess. Next, let's look at a, at a piece of affiliate content over here. And thanks folks for joining up. If you do have the opportunity to hit the thumbs up, I'd really like it. And I think, I think we have quite a few people on. So this is pretty awesome. Thanks again to the moderators and I'll be over in the chat shortly. Thanks again for everyone's patience. Okay, so this is a best studio headphones for under 100, the top eight contenders. So a couple cool things here. I mean, that's a key, a key word um, that, you know, obviously he's going for best studio headphones under $100, right? Really solid, very specific. He also mentions there's eight contenders. So, I know when I shop for stuff on Amazon, sometimes I'm overwhelmed at the number of choices. For example, I bought some rechargeable batteries the other day for you know my various uh, AA devices like my keyboard and mouse and the microphone on my vlogging cam and all that stuff. And basically, there's so many freaking uh, you know rechargeable batteries out there. I got overwhelmed just getting batteries. Right? I knew I wanted. <laughs> like double A rechargeable batteries, like pretty simple. And I was like, I don't know how to make the decision. I'm overwhelmed by the number of choices. And then if I find a brand that I like, it's like, do I need, uh, you know, eight of them or should I buy like two dozen of these? I digress. There's eight contenders here. So Abhishek is simplifying it for the reader. And as we get in here, I love this is sort of following exactly the perfect Amazon review format. It's a template you could get if you go to nichesiteproject.com. And uh, I think it's like in the start here section, if you search around for the perfect Amazon review on my site, you should be able to find it. It's a pretty nice uh, little template. And th this follows it pretty much. So at the top, we have a half width image here. From a copywriting perspective, it gets you to like start scrolling down. And then Abishak nailed it here, right? So I'm not sure about starting <laughs> the review with okay exclamation point, but okay, we're we're doing it that way. And these are very short lines. And the reason, you know, from a copywriting perspective, this is good is I'm going to be scrolling down because I'm like, all right, let's get into the quality studio headphones and he's qualifying us where you know we know that these can be expensive like 500 bucks but maybe you just need one for 100 bucks which is literally right that is why they're here because they googled best studio headphones under 100 dollars. so he's qualified them to let everyone know if they landed here he's not going to be talking about stuff that's like too expensive we're on a budget and he's going to adhere to it we hope so as we scroll down, it does give us a chance to click um, some affiliate links pretty darn quick here. So we have an affiliate link here on the subheading for the, the pre-sonus, uh, whatever. And there's a couple other affiliate links like right away. So 
this is key. Like you kind of want to give people a way to get over to Amazon pretty damn quick if they want to. Now, not everyone is, you know, going to do that, but depending on the price of the product and all that stuff, people may um, decide that they want to just get over to Amazon pretty quick. So that's cool. Give them a chance to do that. Now, one, one thing right off the bat that I see that I don't like about the way this is arranged and organized is you want to put the best one at the top, right? You want to put number one at the top because chances are like this YouTube video, people are not going to read the whole thing. People are not going to watch my whole video. They're going to like maybe pay attention for 30 seconds and then leave. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen for this blog post. So you may as well come out with your good stuff, which is, you know, again, talking about this YouTube video in a very meta way. That's why I try to get to the material as soon as possible instead of, um, you know, telling you about my day, which no one really cares about. Maybe later. Maybe I'll tell you about it later. So I would start with number one and go down. Or if you want to, if you want to do this, um, you know, descending kind of format, at least say, here's my favorite one for, you know, people that are working in a studio. And then here's my favorite one for people that are using this in their home office. You know, if you go take a look at say like the wire cutter, that is sort of how they format it. They'll let you know like the best model for whatever at a specific, um, or, yeah, for a specific user. So anyway, and then you can put these in, you know, this order if you want to, but in my opinion, you want to get the best thing up front. So a couple cool things. Um, he mentions, he's mentioned, he's mentioning the price. Um, or close to the price, which could be a little bit dangerous because you're not supposed to really mention the price. Now, under 100 could be okay, although it's hard to get a straight answer from Amazon, but under 100 or under some certain dollar amount could be okay if it is well below it, right? The reason why Amazon has that rule is they want to have a consistent and uh, you know very good customer experience. So they really don't want um, to have an inconsistent pricing uh, listed. And that's why if you list a price, you need to pull it from Amazon directly using the Amazon API or a tool, a plugin like AAWP or your theme, if it happens to link up to Amazon. And then you are um, basically able to pull the price and know that it's up to date, right? So you, it's a real time pulling of the price. The reason why I'm harping on this is like you can get kicked out of the program for listing prices or, for example, if this happens to be, you know, most of the time if this product is, say, $28 and then the price adjusts to like $30.99, $30 you have a problem there, right? Like Amazon could have an issue with that. And, you know, it's to my knowledge, it's not often when they audit sites, but it does happen. So anyway, be really careful about prices. If you're saying under a hundred and then you're listing everything that's like say under $80, you're probably okay because even with a price adjustment, it's rare that it's gonna go up by you know 25%. So this could be dangerous though. All right, as we scroll down, we have a nice uh, you know high quality image here, which is an affiliate link. Um, we see some other internal links here. So a guide about different headphones. So that's pretty cool. And Abishak is telling us that, uh, you know, there's another similar looking um, headphone here. So another affiliate link. So that's cool. And as we scroll down more internal links, great job linking internally. And then here we have this, um, link to uh, an authority site here uh, talking about the specific headphones. And another thing to note, there's a video here um, about the product. So that's cool. I highly encourage you to you know put videos in, put images in, you know, it lets people know they're in the right place. And if they happen to be really interested in this particular, headphone and they watch the video, that's going to increase the time on site, which is really, you know, 
a good thing. And then last, there's a uh, check current price. And then that's obviously uh, going to Amazon, which I really like to let people know if they're clicking on a link that they are going to Amazon. This seems to be the only one where that's indicated. The others are just, um, you know, regular links. So a couple, couple things maybe I would try. So I think like a call to action um, for these headphones and just say like maybe all the way up here, maybe in the bullet points or um, yeah, actually right here, maybe just say check um, for more details on the features of these headphones on Amazon and then send it, send them over to Amazon. Additionally, it may be cool to have a link to go to the review page on Amazon's and say on Amazon and say, go check out the pre Sonus HD seven uh, reviews from real owners on Amazon, right? And you could send people to the review page on Amazon. Really, a great way to, you know, get people the information that they want. Real user reviews, and, you know, of course get them to go through your affiliate link so that they are cookied. So it's a win-win. They're getting the information they want and they're clicking through your affiliate link. It's one of the you know best calls to action in my opinion. And again, it, it serves the visitor because they're getting the info that they want. So as we scroll down, there's going to be a lot of uh, you know the same sort of comments, right? So we have a standard format. There's going to be a link in the subheading. There is going to be, um, you know, some images. There will be a link to the video and then a link to the Amazon review. So pretty standard. And I, though I love to listen to myself talk and I had just enough caffeine um, but I'm not going to go through and, and repeat myself the same thing over and over. So my only like my overall um, like thought is it's a really good layout. It's a really good review as far as, you know, being able to get like basically uh, eight different um, reviews, different products listed. And this is something here, right? So the number one headphone is locked now. I didn't necessarily think that this was great. And I remember Duke, you commented on this as well. And, you know, I kind of hate these little lockers. I, I tried it out like back in the day and, you know, it's supposed to make things go viral and all that stuff. And I was like, ah, I just hate, I hate doing that. <laughs> um, but Abishak told us that it worked really well and he was getting all sorts of shares. And when we look here, there's 287 likes on Facebook. Um, and, uh, well, there's some error things happening here. So I would potentially just remove the, the Twitter share button and the Google plus, and then just have Facebook. Um, so the key thing here is if you move this number one, I'm waving my hands around, but I don't need to, cause you can't see me, but if you move this, um, number one and have the, the content locker here and put it at the top, you're going to get so many more people sharing it just because they'll actually see it. Right. T honestly, 287, that's pretty impressive for a piece of pure affiliate content. I mean, 287 people liked it crazy right so as we um scroll down they just you know close it out in a similar way to the opening which is fine we see um native ads uh, related to you know the products of course related post and cool so i think that that about covers it for this one and i'm going to come over to the chat I'm going to stop sharing my screen thanks everyone for hanging on if you do have the opportunity to click the like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you're watching the replay, feel free to leave a comment, ask questions, all that sort of thing. So I'm gonna maybe try and look at the old chat here. What questions do you have? So I one of the cool things with doing these live is there's a lot of smart people in the audience and you all will ask really good questions and there are probably 
I'm sure some of you are over there yelling. Uh, Doug, what, what about this? Um, you're totally missing out on that point. And um, I, I unfortunately didn't see it. I'm going to try and take a look at the chat, but um, we'll see how it goes. So thanks everyone for joining up. This is a big crowd and I think I'm slowly learning how to get, you know, more, more people in here. Um, okay. Let me just see here. Let me just see. So since I am looking at the chat, I just want to remind everyone tomorrow, there's a live, a free workshop. I, I, there's no pitch or anything. Um, you do have to sign up for it. There's a link in the description and it's on like outlining content in an effective way, in a very simple way. So that even if you, you know, you're unsure of the niche, you're not experienced, um, if you don't know how to, you know, create an outline to give it to a writer, or maybe you're having a hard time like writing content because you're not outlining it. I'm going to go over a couple techniques that make it, you know, very straightforward. So sign up, you'll be joining the email list, um, but you'll be able to attend the free workshop tomorrow. It's not going to be on YouTube. Um, It'll be via like webinar jam. So be sure to sign up. Um, additionally, there's a link to the keyword golden ratio playlist. In that playlist is a demo with Sem Rush, which I talked about at the beginning of the video. If you haven't watched that, do check it out. You know, check out Sem Rush as well. It's an affiliate link. Um, so if you if you buy it, I get a commission, which I do appreciate. All right. All right, cats on savvy. Cool. And then um, Gerald, what's up from Kenya? We have Andrea. Mama needs her wine. I got I got to connect the names. All right, Andrea. Oh, and Yokohama is on. Good to have you. It's late there. Uh, Subham, what's up, Jeff? And we have... Oh, and Duke um, got back from Spokane. You watched your youngest son graduate. Awesome. Congratulations. That's awesome, and uh, yeah, I passed through Spokane not too long ago. It was a it was an interesting uh, interesting city. Pretty nice where we were at, by the way. Uh, Victor, what's up? Um, look into the sky. Very cool. Chris says. Oh, Chris is giving us some details about. Oh, thanks for all these, by the way. I don't. Chris uh, is sharing knowledge. And it's, I don't know, I assume it's accurate, but don't, don't quote me on it. I haven't had time to you know, check it or anything, but it sounds accurate. Um, Chris says towards the beginning of the year, it was this site apparently was for sale for like 60 K it was dropping earnings massively and got down to 53 K. Chris says in the earnings, even when it was at its peak, it was around 3,500 a month. Okay. Thank you for the update. That seems, you know, that seems reasonable. Um, um, Waquez says, is, what is asking about the theme? Don't know, but you can check that out using some tool that tells you the theme and plugins that a site's using. All right. Sorry, I'm just trying to get through, um, the chat and make sure I'm not missing anything. And then I'm just going to skip down, I think. All right. Rose says, is the font too small? Um, you know what? I kind of like a kind of a big font, like 18 to 22 or something like that. And I think with the resolution of screens, you know, getting bigger and, uh, you know, bigger, a uh, bigger resolution could be nice. So yeah, I, I mean, I think it was in the like acceptable range on the small side. Right. A um, few people that are asking about themes. I don't have a strong opinion on themes. Um, however, because of all the great suggestions about me creating a frequently asked questions page, I am actually writing something up currently. And I'm talking about themes that, you know, some people are mentioning like Rehub. I think I saw that one mentioned in here. And by the way, Rehub is one of the themes that Amazon associates actually mention as using for affiliate sites. This is pretty good endorsement, I think. All right. And Duke is mentioning, you know, you liked Rehub, you switched a lot of your sites over. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think Rehub is pretty solid. I talked to someone the other day who is, um, you know, Rehub enthusiast. All right. 
Da, 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 da. Okay. And I'm getting through. I'm getting through the chat. Thanks for the patience, everyone. Subum asks, can we use other people's YouTube videos? The answer is yes. If there is an embeddable um, link available, then yes. Basically, people want you to watch their YouTube videos. In fact, if you want to, you can embed this video on all your sites, right? I would love it if you embedded my videos all over the place and try to get people to watch it, right? So people want you to do it. If not, they would, they could select the option to not do that. Chris says, what are my thoughts on subheadings being clickable? Good point. I don't like it. I don't like it. Here's the reason why. When I'm scrolling through a site and I see the subheadings, sometimes the subheadings are formatted in a different color or maybe they're bold in a different font like subheadings could look different so in my opinion it's not immediately obvious that a subheading is necessarily a link right so i like to put my affiliate links in like a separate line and say hey check out more reviews on amazon on a separate line that's bold and it looks like hey click here like you're telling someone do something or if they want to see more details to you know click on that link versus the subheading it could be unclear all right cool cool good question good question all right zach says great tear down thank you appreciate it good to have you on here zach and a lot lots of students on today really appreciate that a lot of students from a uh, five figure niche site Charles says, can I put my affiliate links in my articles immediately or should I wait until it starts getting traffic? Well, if you're already in the program, I would say, you know, go ahead and put a couple of them in there. What I don't think you should do is like stress about putting like the right number of affiliate links or putting a lot of affiliate links, but just put, you know, one affiliate link for say every 200 to 300 words or so and then work on like getting traffic so don't stress about putting buttons in by the way i i never use buttons myself we see abhishek didn't use any buttons like you know it's it's worth it to try it if you're interested but like having buttons or no buttons is not going to like change the world for you all right it's not it's not going to make a huge huge difference all right. All right. So Waquez, what's up? Uh, you say one thing. Uh, you, you're asking about why not SSL secure, and the SEMrush traffic uh, is dropping. Okay. So about the like the secure, the SSL or HTTPS. Um, it looks like you know they just didn't put it on, right? So it's not a major issue because the site is not like asking to collect any information. They're not, you know, um, capturing email addresses that I noticed and they're not like, you can't do a transaction, right? You're not entering any data. So it's really not a huge deal, right? Now, uh, like you could probably like buy like any hosting account and then it would come with it. And I assume like whoever owns it and they're doing a transfer, like they would go ahead and move it over, right? There's no reason not to. Now, as far as the traffic drop, it's not 100% clear. I didn't do a full analysis on the backlinks, but what we know is it was around the time that the FRED update came around, which largely impacted affiliate sites. So maybe there was a lot of affiliate content on the site and that contributed. I'm not sure if you know other factors were at play probably there's usually more than one thing happening um the other thing to mention and, and i kind of forgot um as we were going through there could be like kind of a lot of affiliate links right so my belief is if you have a lot of affiliate links on like a lot of your pages it's sort of a compound effect across like your site now i haven't checked that i usually try and be pretty light-handed with affiliate links so luckily fingers crossed and like knock on wood, uh, I haven't had any issues with that sort of thing, but you know, less is more um, with that sort of thing. And, and you know, another, another reason why, and I didn't mention this before, another reason why I don't really like the native ads where there's, you know, banners all over the place, like in the sidebar and in, in the bottom of the, the post, 
there's like six affiliate links. I'm not sure how many, but there are multiple affiliate links in each one of those native ads because like each one of the products goes somewhere. Sometimes you have a button. Sometimes you can click on the number of reviews and see the reviews for the product. So there's like a bunch of affiliate links in those native ads, right? So it, it, if you remove some, maybe, you know, if you got rid of the native ads and the stuff in the sidebar, I mean, you're getting rid of like, you know, 20 links basically right so it's just a guess uh Wakaz. i'm not sure and my hunch is if if it was a pretty like straightforward easy thing to do then abishak probably would have like fixed it up you know uh brie says i've been suggested to use a running blog role as a home page two reasons most people bounce after landing on other web pages anyway and i imagine the home page backlinks more effective with blog role versus a static home page cool i think that's interesting um and those two reasons seem valid um i don't i mean those are reasonable um, assumptions. I think from my perspective, like I'd prefer, I'd prefer to have, um, just like a, a, a better homepage, right. A little bit more intentional rather than like the most recent posts. So maybe have and that like, you know, maybe a few, like maybe two to four of the most recent posts, but then I'd rather have like links to the buying guide. And honestly, I don't think, I mean, like I said, your reasons, Brie, are totally valid. So it's interesting. All right, Steve's on. What's up? All right, I'm going to try and catch up here. I kind of, um, okay, Zach says, how much do I think the not quite right English in the headline affects sales? <sighs> Maybe a tad, probably less than I initially would, would you know, guess. I think people like read this stuff fast so they're skimming it and they may not realize it that said i mean there's some people that are really into grammar i am not one of them which you could probably tell by the way i talk and write but basically some people <laughs> some people go around and like correct people on like how they talk, right? Like in normal conversation, they will literally correct you while they're talking. Those people, why well, I don't I don't know what to think about them, but I don't I don't speak properly all the time. My grammar kind of sucks, and you know I do the best I can. But I mean, for those folks, my point, Zach, for those folks, it probably like they probably notice it and they they realize it. There are some people that um, just want to complain about something, so it probably impacts them. But I actually had to read it twice, and if I wasn't doing this teardown, I literally would not have noticed at all. <laughs> and I would have just like skimmed it, and I'm like, ah, headphones, whatever, um, and I don't pay attention. So maybe a little bit, not a ton. Uh, Asim says, how can you make people click the link and go to Amazon if, um, how to, how can you make US people click the link and go to Amazon if Indian people go to Amazon.in? There's something called one link that you should be able to utilize. So one link, or, I mean, there's a bunch of other tools to do it, but one link is free. It's put out by Amazon. If you go to the Amazon associate, um, like a dashboard, go to tools, one link is listed, follow the instructions, put it into your code. Oh, and do, yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, Reza says, you're amazed a site without perfect English is able to make over 5K a month. It's definitely an inspiration. And I think, uh, quick correction, I thought it was closer to 5K. Uh, word on the street is it may be lower to 3,500. Oh, quick thing and i know um chris by the way um chris harden appreciate it here i just realized something the site probably made um it probably made close to five thousand, but selling on empire flippers they had to true up the amount that they earned because in march of 2017 the commission rates dropped 
and a lot of sites were impacted by like 30 to 50% or so. I know when I sold a site um, for, this is Project a White Hat, um, my partner and I sold it for 235,000 over at Empire Flippers. They had to true up all of our revenue and basically um, we I pulled all the historical data, um, categorized it and then looked at the impact of that change for the commission rate. So, okay, hopefully that makes sense. So maybe it did make 5K, but that was in 20, um, prior to uh, March 1st, 2017. I can believe that. All right, Kent, oh, good to have you on. It has been a while, Steve says. Steve is asking an unrelated question, but I'll humor it. If you have 15 articles ready, then do it. All right, yeah, go for it. Um, look into the sky says the site is using scholarship backlinks. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, and that could have impacted it as well. Sterling says Sterling from Philly. What's up? What do we need to do to get your site reviewed by me and suggestions or a roadmap? So I do coaching Sterling. Um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And if you go to nichesiteproject.com slash hire dash me, you can get more information. And I charge like $247 for an hour. You get an action plan out of it. A lot of people on here, um, or at least a few people on here, have had coaching sessions with me. So if people want to you know, mention, hey, Doug's good at coaching or he's kind of a jerk uh, when you're coaching, um, then you could put that in there if anyone wants to mention feedback. But yeah, I do some one-on-one -on -one stuff. James says, when building content, do you use a release calendar? No. How do you research and build content? Check out, James, check out the webinar. It's free tomorrow. All you have to do is sign up. So, I mean, I can answer really quick though, but tomorrow I'll go detailed. We'll do a full demo. Like I pull open a Google Doc and I like show you what I'm doing. I make it up on the spot. Um, so how do you research? Just Google stuff, read, check it out, go to manufacturer sites, read stuff. How do you build content? Write an outline, write it. What tools? Google Docs, basically. All right. Um, Paul is on. Benji's dad says if the value is there answering the question the searcher is looking for, then the grammar is secondary. Indeed. I think that's probably true. Chris says, do I think he should have used the table at the beginning and images and buttons? Excellent question. I think with eight different products, a table would have been awesome. I think images could be optional, right? Um, buttons could be optional as well. Some people love buttons in a table and maybe if they've added them, they've seen like a, a jump or something like that. One thing I kind of hear, all right, people stick with me. This is an interesting one. This could be the nugget in here. So on a, let's say you have a table. Let's say you have eight products and the common like wisdom is to put your image in the table. However, what if instead of putting an image in there, you list some of the specs and then you use curiosity to, to get people to click over to Amazon? They'll want to click over to Amazon. So you have the name of the product, the headphone, headphone model A. And then in parentheses, you say see image on Amazon. And then that whole thing is your affiliate link. So instead of instead of um, like just showing them what it is, they'll have to take action and go see the details on Amazon. Table would be a really good idea with eight different items though. Paul says, um, you heard there was a Google update in the last few days, anyone impacted? Um, not that I know of, but feel free in the chat to talk about it. Asim says, why, doesn't, why don't people reveal their sites? And I think Duke mentioned that before, basically negative SEO, and there's a lot of people who are mean out there in the world and then they'll they'll try and do bad stuff to your site and by the way um i forgot to mention this earlier but um on friday i'm gonna have a special guest on the q a so if you're not aware of the friday q a um, be sure to subscribe to the channel 
it's already scheduled so you can like click the button to get a reminder so you don't miss out same time as today so 10 a.m mountain time i have a special guest on um he's been on the channel before he's going to answer some questions and i did um like i guess a few a few sessions with him uh earlier this week asked him if he wanted to join up so anyway that should be exciting he'll he'll be on on friday i won't mention who it is so you know to build up the anticipation but i did three videos with him um that I'll be releasing in the next couple of weeks. One of them is actually ASIM about negative SEO. So if you want to see people's sites, um, go to Income School. All right, go to Income School. Um, they have another channel, Rick, uh, yeah, Jim and Ricky. And basically they reveal all their sites. You can go and look at them and they go through all the stuff. Um, I don't do it because I've seen too much like carnage in my, in my day. All right. Cool, cool. Um, Kat says one of your sites got affected by the update. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, and Reza says you don't see a disclosure anywhere on the post is safe. Oh, let me take a quick look. And I thought there was one in the bottom, but maybe there is not. Good point. So there probably should be like, at this point, it's probably best to have your disclosure in on every page somewhere. A lot of people put it in the footer. Um, and I think that's probably fine. I, yeah, you're right. I actually don't see da, 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 the rounding sound. No, nope, I don't see anything. So good call. I didn't notice that. It's kind of, I mean, at this point, it's kind of like, on so many sites, I forgot to even look for it. So that that's a good point. Great point there. All right. Okay, cool. And I think we're mostly through the questions here. Although I saw one from Lance. And, and yeah, so if you have other questions, please let me know. Um, please hit the thumbs up if you enjoy the video. If you're watching the replay, leave a comment. Say you watch the replay. Just say thanks or, you know, I like these or I don't like these. All right. Lance says, do I place native ads in my post? No, I don't. They didn't really work well for me and I didn't really like them. So I, there was a very low upside for it. Looking into the sky says, with a site like rounding sound, what would the backlink strategy look like? Guest post to inner post only. Mm, probably a blend. Um, I don't know. So how you should look at this um, is look at the links that are already out there. So I didn't look at the links that were already out there, but let's assume there's none. All right. Let's, there are some, but let's assume there's none. I would probably... I would probably do like 50 50 like links to the home page and then links to like a few posts that i'm trying to rank basically and that's i would probably leave it um like that all right and D duke says um that he researched one of income school sites that they're selling their backlink pro profile skyrocketed in the last few months since they revealed it my guess is they're being hit with negative seo yeah and the thing is like negative seo like usually doesn't work but when it does it really sucks um in in the video about negative seo that i'll be putting out in a couple of weeks and by the way it'll be a series it'll be an update from the mystery person that i that i'm not telling you about yet but check it out on friday and then the second video is on negative seo and how to deal with it and like i said most of the time people get sent a bunch of crappy links to your site and it doesn't work but at some point you hit a threshold and like bad stuff happens, your site gets penalized for unnatural links, and then you have to deal with it then. So you can ignore it for a long time, but when you have to deal with it, it's like hundreds of dollars a day, every single day that it's costing you, and you have to like figure out how to deal with it. And this person was able to, you know, disavow the bad links and get the rankings back. It wasn't easy, it wasn't fast, but as um, a lot of people mentioned, these websites are like, full-time income and we're supporting our families with it and stuff. So 
it's like you got to do something with it. And the thing is, um, that's exactly why people don't reveal their sites. Some people do sometimes, but like it catches up with them at some point. So anyway, that is... That is the deal. Palesh, what's up? Good to have you on. Anthony, yeah, do good to have you on as, as well. So uh, yeah, do catch it up. Do catch up and rewind. Um, Subham is asking an unrelated question. I recommend you go Google it. Um, all right. And Kat is talking about her issue with her site and it sounds like it could be too much affiliate content. Interesting. Anthony says for displaying the disclaimer, does it have to be on every page? That is the best um, practice is to put it on every page. Can you put it in a link in the footer? You can do that. But the, again, the best practice is to have it on every page. Um, and then Rose is asking, did I go to Syracuse for beer brewing? No, I didn't. Um, I did not. Actually, I've never been to Syracuse at all. Uh, Reza says, about the disclosure, does it have to be at the beginning of every post? And that is the best, best practice is to have it at the at the top so that like there's no confusion, like people know like what's going on. Um, but I am I believe in the footer is generally sufficient to my knowledge. And pause, it is not, it's not Ty Lopez. That's way above my uh, pay grade, I think. Pop says, can I talk about editing the post that you've already written? It might not be performing that well. Is it bad to go back and extend or should you just write a new post? Okay, so a couple things here. Um, two main things. I recommend using the FAQ method to go back and just add content. So I know that that works really well. I had a student mention to me that they they went to a KGR post that was ranking like number seven. Their site's only five months old. It was ranking number seven. And then they added, I think 2000 words using the FAQ method within the day in under 24 hours their site moved from like number seven to number three so that's point number one yes add content that's a good idea however um the second point which is more important is if you have a post that's not performing that well ignore it who cares move on right you should focus on the posts that are doing well and making those better so let's say you have two posts one's ranking like 12 and one's ranking like number three. Don't try and pull the number 12 one up to the bottom of the uh, first page. Work on the one that's ranking number three and make it better and then get it to number one. That'll be way better than moving it up. All right. So add to it. Yes. But don't try to like push the boulder uphill. You want to like roll a, you know, a wheel down a hill. You know, don't push a boulder up a hill. All right. Bree says, it's very motivating when I review affiliate sites, you're getting practical sense of how to do things, how I think, and the suggestions to improve it. You'd like to hear about backlinks too. Cool. Thanks for the, the uh, comment there. Benji's dad says, it's a great idea to go back um, to pages that rank five to 20 and add to the post. And like I said, I mean, I agree with your, um, that's what I used to say by the way, but why don't you go to the posts that are ranking like number four to number one, and then you already know those are going to rank well, right? So just add more content to it. You'll pull in more long tails, like tr try it. Um, Palesh says, can we do web 2.0 niche sites to create backlinks? You can, you can do that, but I don't recommend that you do that. Okay, Rimpy says um, he wants to know, he or she wants to know about globalizing uh, links. So you could use one link, that's Google solution, or you can use like 10 other solutions that are out there, it doesn't matter. Okay, Anthony says, how do I suggest um, that you get 
new visitors to discover old content on your site? That's a tough one. Um, you know, in the rounding sound, they linked to, you know, other posts. So if you're interested in like headphones, like keeping headphones, uh, like how to care for headphones, you're probably interested in, you know, other audio related things. So they link to their other posts. So that's a good way to do it. It's not immediately easy, depending on how you're bringing in traffic. All right. So if you're bringing in traffic that is buyer oriented, which is good, then you're probably just going to like, hopefully send them over to Amazon, right? That's the goal. So when you have these informational posts, that is a great time to get them to other content, maybe even your, you know, your affiliate related content. So interlinking is good. And then if you have an email list, of course, that's a good way to just like, you know, send emails over the course of like a year, um, you know, once a week, you can get them through, you know, 50 of your posts, even if a person only opens, you know, a small number of your emails, it does pay off to to do that. Camille says you applied the keyword golden ratio. And within two weeks, your article is ranking on the third page without doing anything. That's awesome. Wesley's on what's up. So uh, Camille, yeah, keep us posted on how it's going. Uh, congratulations. Chris says, are there any benefits? benefits to building indirect links to your money pages versus direct links to your money page. Yes, there are benefits just generally having more links to your site. Well, that's good. That's a good thing to do. That's a good thing to do. And I used to focus almost solely on just interlinks, but in the last year or so, I've been focusing, you know, just getting some branded links to the home page. And it's a pretty natural thing to happen. I mean, when I looked at my backlink profile for like niche site project, a lot of the links are indeed like to the homepage with the name of the brand and, or maybe like my name. Theo is asking a question that I don't know. Um, so Theo says, I have issues with the speed of my website for leveraging browser caching and parsing JavaScript. Do I know how to fix it? No, sure don't. I know there are some plugins that can supposedly do those things, but I personally have also had issues and I think it, I, my hunch is it depends on the specific implementation of your theme and the plugins that you have and how all that plays together. So I don't know because I mean, a lot of ways like, say like W3 Total Cash or any of the other caching plugins. That's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Basically, they're supposed to do like all that stuff. But if you click the little checks checkbox to say defer parsing or, you know, minify the CSS and JavaScript or something like that, it may or may not do it. You may still get flags that you're not doing that. And I think it depends on, you know, the specifics um, of your theme, so, and plugins. So sorry, Theo, I have no idea. And you may have to hire someone to look at it and then they may not be able to fix it either. Paul says, do you do anything with spammy websites that point to your websites? Different ones keep popping up in the console. Basically, you should disavow them. If, if you see that they are crappy and you don't want them pointing to your site, just disavow them. If you don't know how to disavow, you can just Google um, the disavow tool and Google actually has really good, like thorough instructions. You just submit a text file, super easy. All right, someone's asking about plugins. It, it doesn't matter. I use a couple of security plugins and that's about it. But I, have a, I do have a more thorough answer, but it's kind of off topic. Um, in the more thorough answer, I, I have been, I mentioned this earlier, but I've been putting together an FAQ page for questions like what theme, um, what plugin, you know, how do you get images? Um, just a long page with like 30 different items. And I was, I'm working on it. Um, and I thought I was going to be able to put like shorter answers for each one of them. But, you know, the first couple ended up being like, a thousand words each. <laughs> so I'm going to have to uh, tighten it up a little bit um, as I move forward. 
Powell says, have I ever tried PPC? Only a tiny bit, but not in the way that you're thinking. Probably I've run uh, quite a few Facebook ads over the years, but not for affiliate marketing for niche site project. How can you get me to do a review of your site? Basically, um, you could hire me for one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I, I do that occasionally. If you go to um, nichesiteproject.com slash hire dash me, should be fairly easy to find. You can get more information there, but basically I could audit your site, give you a roadmap on what to work on and basically, um, you know, give you like action, action items to a complete an action plan. Jaron is on. What's up? Good to have you. And Duke says, oh, Duke is telling us about security and uh, security and other plugins and all that stuff. So my thought, here's a reason why I don't answer the plugin uh, question very well. I try not to use many plugins. Uh, earlier, I, I was talking about like just minimal and simple. And when I first started using WordPress, well, I didn't know anything, but I just heard people talking about, oh, you can get a plugin to do anything. I would hear, uh, you know, Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income talk about like all these different plugins that he uses. And I would see posts like the 25 top plugins to use for WordPress for blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh man, like I want to, I want to like have a widget in a certain area. So I would like put a plugin for that. Next thing you know, I had like 30 plugins and my site would barely load. It was so slow. And then I realized, oh, you don't need all those plugins. So now basically I have to have like a specific reason that I like absolutely have to have a plugin in or I don't install it. And by the way, and for a lot of things, like I think actually basically all plugin functionality can be coded into WordPress. Of course, you may have to hire someone to, to do it, but the functionality can be included in WordPress. So I try to not do, or I try not to use plugins and just avoid them if possible. Because most things don't matter that much. Big things are security, um, caching, and then backing up. So um, Powell says, how much uh, does it cost to hire me? 247 for an hour. Theo says, is it better to write view price or view more in the button section? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, and, and Duke says you agree with limited plugins. And I think, you know, once people get some experience, like generally they want fewer plugins. The other part is like you end up with conflicts between other plugins and, you know, this, um, uh, a couple of the companies that I would get like support from that had plugins or themes or whatever, if I had a problem, say with their theme, they would just tell me to disable all of my plugins and see if there was a conflict. And, you know, unfortunately that is like really hard to do. Say if you have a, a plugin that runs your membership site, like you can't just, you know, turn it off. <laughs> so all right, I think I think we caught up mostly, and we had a you know a really huge number of people. So whatever I did this last time was a, a good thing. Maybe it was a a really nice topic. All right, a couple of the the announcements. So do uh, sign up for the webinar tomorrow. It's free. There's no pitch. You can't buy anything. I'm just going to show you how to do something. It's around content. So if you're thinking about like either improving content, this could be helpful. If you're thinking about outlining content or you're having trouble like coming up with, you know, how to write, this uh, webinar will be super helpful. Again, no, no pitch or anything, and that's for real. Um, and then there are a couple other links. So if you're interested in like SEMrush, check that out. There's a playlist for the keyword golden ratio. And if you didn't watch that masterclass, it's very, very good. I think Alex and I probably could have sold that as a course for like, you know, a hundred bucks and people would be thrilled, but it's free and you can just watch it immediately. I would say bookmark it, take some notes, like really try and study it. It's probably close to two hours of material. And the SEM, the reason why I'm talking about it, there's a SEM rush demo in there where I show you the filters that I personally use to find KGR keywords. 
Pop says, when you're starting a new blog, what's your sweet spot for the number of posts per revenue? I don't usually evaluate it like that. So I'm not sure. Do I try to quickly get to a certain number of posts and then add more posts slowly over time like that? So I'm not sure about the posts per revenue. Um, do I try to get up a certain number of posts? Generally, yes. I say launch with 10. And then usually I'll spend a lot of time on link building and outreach and just networking to try and promote the site. And then I really don't, I either I'll ignore content and not publish anything or I publish a whole lot. So um, pop, have a look at, I think it's video number 10 in the KGR playlist where I talk about publishing 200 articles in five months. So I usually either don't pub publish anything or I'm sprinting um, on a piece of work and I'm doing a lot. I just work better that way. Um, NXO says, at what point do you say this website isn't working in correct niche? Let's say you put out 10 really good posts, but you get no sales. Do you give up at that point? I would say no. There's a lot of factors in it. So I would say um, you, if you put out 10 posts and then you don't do anything, then you haven't tried hard enough. So in, in, I'm not saying that that's what you've done, NXO. It's just hard to tell with the context of your question. So I would say that um, you have to give it like a year, you know, probably. And then you should do a really good job, like trying to pick the niche so that you don't arrive at that point. Most of the time, even if it's a bad niche and I mean, I've helped um, coach a couple of people that were in the niche and I was like, it's kind of, it's a little narrow, it's a little weird, but I think, you know, you may have a narrow way to like finagle your way in and they were able to, they, they took a site from getting zero traffic, making no money to 1200 bucks a month. Uh, you know, I spent a little time with this person in the last couple of weeks. Um, and it, I mean, it's just like persistence and like adjusting and continuing to like basically, um, improve the site and do better. All right. Okay. And John says, is there a link for Q and a on Friday? Yes. Yeah, the same bitly link that we've had before. And I think, Oh, there we go. Let's see. There it is. There you go, John. And feel free to just like ask it in the comments too. But um, yeah, you could submit it there, John. Thanks for asking. Um, again, there's a Friday Q and A, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, where you know we answer all 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 questions. Crypto says, "Who do I use to host my websites?" Um, I really like SiteGround. There's a affiliate link in the description. And if you're looking for hosting, it is a little more expensive, but the customer service is absolutely amazing. So if you're looking for cheaper hosting, um, there's other cheaper hosts out there, but most of the time you don't need any support, but when you need support, it's really important to get good support. All right. Let's see. And a lot of people were saying to publish 100 posts, um, do 100,000 words, wait for 12 months. Yeah, so basically a lot, right? You don't have to do that. And the, who, who's here, who is familiar with Project Go White Hat? I realized I haven't been talking about Project Go White Hat for a while. And it was like a year ago in June when uh, my partner and I sold um, the site on Empire Flippers for like a couple hundred thousand. It was crazy, right? Um, but I wrote a lot of content about this full case study. It was very exciting. It's like 13 parts um, covering the whole thing. But like, it's not my autoresponder. I sent emails out like when I was writing about it, but I, I haven't really talked about it much. So I imagine a lot of people like totally missed out on it. And I may... I may be adding that either to the autoresponder or just sending out emails like, hey, remember that time that, you know, 
Project Go White Hat was going on. It was about private blog networks. We got into white hat outreach. We added a lot of content. We took a site that was making 10,000 per month and got it up to 32,000. It was very exciting. So who who's familiar with Project Go White Hat? Has it been a long time since I've talked about it? Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Cool. And I think there's just like good discussion going back. Um, back and forth here it does i don't even need to say anything which is nice very cool very cool i've been email this is uh this is about my day just chatting now so i've kind of been looking at um the the i'm aware that uh, like my home office here is in the guest bedroom and the beds behind me so every now and then not super often but people will say, why are you doing this in your bedroom? <laughs> and then basically my, my wife wanted to get a guest bed um, to put in the office because sometimes we have guests come over, right? Not, not very often, like a very, very small percentage of the time. But anyway, that means I have a bed behind me when I'm doing this. I don't love it, right? So I try and shoot some of the videos um, like out in the living room where there's like more open space, looks kind of nice. Or sometimes if I face this way, then you can't see the bed and it looks more like an office, which is okay. But I've been emailing, um, kind of searching on Craigslist to see if there's just like one office that I can just rent this like extra space for like a company or they're not using it all the time, something like that. Cause I don't, I mean, I don't want to go to the office like every single day, but I want to be able to can't see Georgie, but she's sleeping over there. I want to, you know, get out of the house, um, maybe be able to bring Georgie and just have a place that I could work and maybe shoot some videos where it's a better setting. So anyway, I've been emailing back and forth and it looks like maybe I feel on the spot. So I'm not, not sure. So thanks everyone. Crypto says you don't know about Project of White Hat. Dami does. Zach is familiar. And MXO, you just started watching me a couple of videos and you found a niche, started writing some code. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. And then Duke says it was that case study that made you start following. Interesting. Because that was like a year ago. Um, and then I, I, we didn't like, I didn't start doing all these live streams and we didn't acquaint ourselves until uh, like the last few months. Interesting. All right. Yeah. And so um, basically, if you just found this like a couple of weeks ago, it's a very exciting time. You're going to learn so much in the next year. There's another video. If you haven't seen it, um, NXO, it's called like um, the thousand day rule. I shot it with um, my friend actually, who is on, who is my business partner for project of white hat, um, Rob Atkinson. And basically it takes like three years to sort of like get started the first year you're feeling what you're feeling right now. And it was like super, um, <laughs> it's like, it's very encouraging. And you see people that are like further ahead and you're just like, I don't know what to do. It's frustrating. You're maybe thinking, Hey, I'm at least as smart as Doug. Maybe you have a lot more hair than me. Maybe you're, you're younger and stronger and you know, all these things. And um, you're like, why can't I, I do it? And you totally can. It's just like you have to go through the learning curve and it probably will take, you know, a year and then you'll start connecting more dots. Things will start working. You'll be way more confident. And then like once you get past um, year three, you're like, this does work. I can't believe how much I didn't know. And I can't remember life before this, like that sort of thing. All right, cool. All right, and Bree is out of here. See you later. Anthony says, you went to an SEO meetup and the speaker mentioned there's no such thing as white hat backlinking. Is this true? Well, it, it all depends on how you define it. So technically, if you're doing anything ever where your intent is to get backlinks, then technically from a very pure definition, then no. So it goes back to your intent. So can you do guest posting and that be white hat? Well, yeah, it can be. Maybe you don't put a link to any of your 
your site, but whoever posts the guest post does link back to you in, in like the introduction, right? So that would actually be maybe why I had, but if let's say someone, let's say you found someone and you emailed them um, and you were like, hey, do you think you could link to my site? Technically, right? That is like, that's doing something to get a link. So, okay. Um, but you know what? I don't disagree. Like people can define things how they want to. So for the context of that SEO meetup and the speaker, maybe that is totally valid. Uh, the, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. Um, and Zach says, do Rob and I still work together on sites? We don't. We don't know there was no no issue or anything but like the timing of like doing things and and all that stuff um i think we were like hey we'd work together again if something comes up organically um we can go for it but we were busy with other things that were unrelated so all right it seems like we're all through here um great attendance today i'll have to do whatever i did before <laughs> Maybe it was the cool headline. I think this will be a great one. And I haven't looked. Oh, we have 57 likes. That's that's really good for uh, for now. So, and Anthony smashed the heck out of the like button. All right, I think we're all set. Georgie wants to go for a walk. If you're new to the channel or new to the live streams, welcome. Really appreciate you um, hopping on. If you're catching the replay and maybe you're new, um, and you, for some reason, hung out for an hour and 20 minutes. Thanks. And be sure to leave a comment. So I'm going to get out of here. Oh, and uh, oh, Aloha, JS. So NXO, you never understood one thing. Why am I giving away all my secrets? Oh, Jaren's out of here. Duke. Um, yeah, we had a lot of people on. So why am I giving away all the secrets? So a couple things. I sell a course. At some point, um, I'll let you know that I'm selling a course and I, I, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty aggressive about it when I do it, but when I don't, I just give everything away. The other thing is, um, the reality is a lot of people watch stuff or they learn things and they never do anything with it. So by me giving stuff away, I am helping a lot of people. There's actually a lot of people on here that have gotten great benefits, uh, like knowledge and understanding and I'm like impacting people in a positive way, right? That's awesome. There are a handful of people that could say that that's true. And the other part is like, it creates, you know, goodwill, it's good karma. And, you know, if, if someone needs hosting and I help them somehow, they may click on my affiliate link and I'll get, you know, a commission from it. So that's cool. Um, but overall, I'm not really sure, but building a platform is like a, a pretty good thing to do. So, uh, and I think um, a lot of people know that I've, I've mentioned that I'm doing a podcast with my wife. So we have, we've recorded three episodes. She's, she's doing the editing and I, I think we'll be able to launch in a couple of weeks. And then I'm pretty sure I'm going to do my own just affiliate marketing podcast where I could really geek out on like the really deep stuff here where you know you're asking like very detailed like the minutia of all this stuff that we're doing it really loses a lot of people i mean you got to be into this um and a lot of us are i mean i listened to so many podcasts when i was getting started um, i would listen to the same one over and over again to really like like understand what people were doing it's crazy now that i think about it i mean i would listen to them for fun put them on in the car and just hours. I would listen to like 20 hours of podcast a week. So anyway, I'm going to give away even more. And Zach is exactly right. Um, Brian's right. It's good marketing. It's Ramit Sethi, um, Ramit, I guess, Sethi. And I'm a big fan of I Will Teach You To Be Rich. I actually have purchased a lot of their courses and even more of them in the recent, um, you know, the last couple of weeks, I've, I bought like two other courses from them. And the point is, and Zach mentions it, give away like 95% of your material for free. And then the last 5% is for paying customers. And the support, and Zach is a student of mine. <laughs> and so Zach knows like the level of support that I provide. So my, basically my, um, oh, you see Georgie back there. Um, my free material is 
generally better than a lot of the paid material out there. And there's a crazy amount of volume of material just on my channel, right? I mean, I haven't even watched all the videos and <laughs> there's a lot of them out there. There's like 500 something. It's insane. So I really, I'm like overwhelming you with value and hopefully it builds trust. So maybe, you know, maybe you don't buy anything from me, but maybe you tell people like, Hey, you should check out Doug's stuff. All right. Um, Okay, Sanjay says, you spent too much money making a product comparison site, okay? But now you're confused on what type of keyword you should use, short tail or long tail. Probably a blend is the best way to go, but if you check out the KGR, the keyword golden ratio, it is all long tail stuff, ultra long tail, we'll call it. So watch those videos, and I would generally say, brand your site in a broad way and then go after really ultra long tail stuff using the keyword golden ratio. Kamal is asking uh, more about my course. So it's five figure niche site. The price is between 600 and 2000, depending on what you are, which package you're getting. Um, there's a lot of details that I probably shouldn't even mention the price, but I just want to be front. So there's a lot of details and knowledge um, that you should have before you even like decide on it. So there are different packages uh, beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. Okay. Daniel says, what do I think about drop shipping? It's fine. Not my thing. All right. And I think I think it's time to go. So Georgie, you know, she shook off uh, there. So that means she's ready for the walk. Um, everyone, there is the live stream on Friday. Be sure to go, to go to my channel. You'll see it listed and then you'll be able to click uh, for the reminder. It'd be really cool if we had like, you know, 80, 80 plus people again. That'll be fantastic. So, all right, everyone have a great day. Good rest of the week. And we'll see you on the next, the next one. <laughs>